everyone, and welcome to this uh, exciting episode of the Financial Insights Show. My name is Maloch Vesakunda, and I'll be your host on this particular episode. We're really excited today with the guest that we have. He's a long friend, time friend of Financial Insight, and you may remember him from the Financial Insight Season 1 show, where he told us a bit about uh, his various businesses, his background, and what defined him as a businessman. Allow me to present to you Maven Modenda. How are you, Maven? Good. Good morning. How are you? Thank you so much for coming back. And, uh, you know, it's so exciting to have you again on the show. No, it's actually a pleasure to be back on the show. And, uh, yeah, we have exciting things to talk about. Um, God has been good to me. And, uh, yeah, let's see, what, uh, let's, let's see what, what you want to talk about. Absolutely. And just as a recap for everyone, um, and I know that, you know, sometimes you always complain that oh, maybe my titles are so long, but, you know, Maven is the founder and uh, current uh, board chairman of uh, Medenda Capital, as well as Insiswa Private Brokers, among other businesses. But we won't delve too much into all those other businesses. We'll, you, we'll discover, you know, a lot about what's going on, you know, with, uh, with Maven over the last uh, couple of months. So Maven, from the last time you came uh, on the Financial Insights Show, we understand that you've been very, very busy since yes. Q1. Um, and congratulations, by the way, on your appointment as Insiswe uh, uh, Private Brokers, uh, uh, you know, board chair. Thank Tell you. us a little bit about, you know, what Insiswe Private Brokers is and, you know, why the role of board chair for this particular entity? Okay, so Insiswe Private Brokers. Insiswe is a, an insurance brokerage firm um, <clears throat> born out of um, um, an insurance company, which, I, which we owned um, a few years ago called African Grey Insurance. So it started with an agency license under African Grey. Uh, now it's uh, it's a fully uh, uh, licensed broker entity, so we broker we broker uh, insurance businesses for for our for our, for our clients basically. <clears throat> for example, we have um, Nali Nico Mine, we have FQM, um, we have quite a few quite a few uh, blue chip businesses now. I, I can and imagine it's about uh, it, it's under it has underwritten about six million dollar six million dollars business at the moment. I can imagine it's and it's and what's quite impressive is that you know your portfolio of uh, of, of companies. But then at the same time, one of the things that we also observed uh, following the announcement as you as board chair was the announcement of Eugene Chungu as a member of that particular board. Now, for viewers that don't know who Eugene Chungu is, he is the corporate affairs uh, director at Zambia uh, as at Zambia Zambia Sugar, mm -hmm. and obviously you know this is another blue chip company, and it looks like you know your firms are now attracting, you know, like blue chip individuals, if we can call them that. Why was it so important to bring Eugene on the board? Uh, well, it's, 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 uh, it's, another, it's another way of uh, inclu uh, uh, including human capital to the business. Uh, professional human capital, uh, govern corporate governance. Uh, as you know, Chungu has been in several, uh, se he's sat on several boards. Uh, he's, he's, he's been in senior management in big companies, KCM, uh, Lafarge, uh, Zambia Sugar. Uh, it adds on. It, it it actually just creates a bigger profile for 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 instance, where you have certain certain directors on the board. For example, Bright Tembo. Bright Tembo. <clears throat> Bright Tembo was uh, one of the first finance uh, managers, finance directors from Opani Copper Mines. Uh, we had Jito Kayumba, Jito, who's now at State House. Um, he came off because obviously he couldn't be on the board. Um, uh, we've had uh, Tilasoni Chikwanda, uh, we've had, uh, 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 what's his name, uh, Mutale Kasonde, the lawyer. So we've had good uh, human capital in, in, the, in the sense of when we're growing the business. And the business through these people has grown, uh, has grown extremely, extremely well. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, obviously attracting, you know, obviously the best in the industry, notable figures who have uh, extensive uh, professional backgrounds is very important. Then I'll turn now my attention to the transportation business because in our first interview, you told us a little bit about the transportation businesses that you have interest in. Uh, we've recently learned that you know um, not only are you extending to Congo but also other uh, African countries. Mm -hmm. How's the business going so far, and where is uh, the transportation business at this okay, moment? So under Mudenda Capital, we 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 we've we've we've, we've invested in um, <clears throat> different. Uh, uh, categories of the transport sector. So we've got Southern Logics, which we have the fuel tankers. Uh, with uh, Southern Logics does the region, um, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Congo. So we work with the multinationals like the ADEX, Total, Orex, 
to distribute fuel in Zambia and Congo. Um, of late, we've been doing a lot of uh, FQM. Um, with uh, <clears throat> on the on the flatbeds, we've been we've we've been working with com uh, blue chip companies like Poseidon, uh, Access World, uh, Reload, and these ones uh, these companies actually are, 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 are contractors of Glencore and the big Kamau and Kamoto mines. So as as I speak. Each one of the businesses is giving us a, a thousand or two thousand tons of copper to move out of Congo, oh, and awesome. we're moving quite a lot of it out of Tenke right now. We've even then partnered with uh, uh, Hamilton Global. Hamilton Global is running about two hundred trucks now under Mudenda Capital to carry copper for for the blue chip boys. You know, one of the things that we observed from our first conversation was that we noted that you know your aspirations go far and wide and I think Zambia obviously was not big enough if I can describe it that but you know having a pan-african mm -hmm. sort of approach positions you properly but then we also noted that you also set up uh, you've also now uh, established a security business alongside yes. the transportation yes tell us a little bit about the thinking around that because yeah, so what, so usually it's just it's creation it's all job creation and it's also just thinking outside the box I mean I've got a scenario where I have insurance, I have transportation, and uh, within the same clients, I've created four businesses. You know, I've got insurance, I've got transport, I've got security, you know, so the security itself, we, we decided, look, we are always, um, had to, we always had to pay another company to do escort for the copper. So we decided why not uh, create, why not start uh, courier security services to do escort for the for the for the same uh, tonnages that we are carrying for the for, for for our contracts, and that's how Curio Curio Security started. It's it's out of uh, it's registered in Zambia, registered in Congo, but it's more of a Congo business, and it has grown. I mean, Curio is now uh, escort. That way, now we've got doing escorts for eight eight uh, eight mining companies, uh, with uh, with each, whichever load they carry, we do. One of our biggest. Uh, clients right now is beach shipping. Beach shipping gives us a lot of loads between Indola and uh, Lu Indola and Kolwezi and Lubumbashi. So Kolwezi straight into Indola we do, in a week we do more than 2,000 tons of security worth of security jobs, which is which is very good, which is... That's substantial. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's quite substantial. Yeah. Now, so we, we, even your question again, we go back, we go back to saying, uh, I've also just realized that uh, uh, Mudenda Capital has placed itself in the region and placed itself quite well. Fuel, security, on the insurance, insurance is, is where we mainly do local mainly. But most of our businesses are now outside the borders. Most of our businesses coming outside the borders. Zambia is a transit point uh, for most of our businesses, but the actual clients are sitting outside Zambia. Yeah. And that's, that's very interesting. Now, you know, being board chair of all these entities, obviously, you know, does give you um, a certain perspective. But then we also note that, you know, you're also on the board, for example, of American Chamber of Commerce, which is, for Zambia, which is renowned for advocacy uh, for various businesses in Zambia. Um, do you feel that the influence of, uh, you know, like uh, being on boards such as this are giving, um, or rather having an impact in terms of the work that they do, and are you able to give an example in terms of the advocacy uh, well, I, work? I would, uh, by the way, I my term for American Chamber being on the board uh, ended last month, uh, but I must say, uh, through the chamber, um, I've had a lot of uh, sort of how can I say it? the chamber sort of pushed pushed certain agendas for me to to get where I am. Um, it worked in the sense that even talking to uh, uh, business people, they, when they do a KYC, they find that you're a member of the American Chamber. So it, it helped to influence certain businesses, certain transactions. Uh, and now I'm a member of also the, of the French business circle. You'll be surprised that most of my uh, businesses that I've got on the fuel, uh, uh, fuel, uh, the fuel transactions is because of my connection with the French business circle. Because I think if you look at most of the CEOs, I'll make this as a joke, but it is not a joke. Mm -hmm. Most of the CEOs in the, in the OMCs, the big OMCs, the multinational OMCs are French. Yeah. 
yeah, in this country. So it has worked in my favor. Absolutely. Yeah. So you know, so there is a benefit in being. Yes, a part there is of, a benefit. Uh, yes, of many of these entities. Yes. Now, um, you know, access to finance obviously is an issue that I think we may have touched on in the first, uh, in our first episode. But you know, it's it's obviously becoming a very topical issue now uh, for especially small businesses that are starting up in terms of you know them accessing financing. Now, being part of you know what I, we would describe at Financial Insight as a Pan African you know group of companies, really. Um, how is access to financing now, or rather, how has it evolved from the time you first started to the way it is now? Okay, so um, I, some of my, some of my, uh, two of my, let me just say, two of my partners in the businesses um, are, are very, I would say we finance most of our projects. Two of my partners are very well, you know, they are uh, financially strong and um, they've, we've been, We've been using some of our own money to buy. Organically. Yes, and uh, but we've had banks uh, come 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 away, and you know, we've worked with uh, under MK Petroleum. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'll ask what I'll ask our CEO. I think we are working with Stanbic there on a few transactions. Um, our Hamilton, we work with with Absa. Yeah, so we do we do get facilities from the financial. Uh, how, how easy how easy is it now compared to like when you were starting out? Because obviously there's this call and cry that you no know, look, uh, it should be made a bit easier. Before it was before it was I think before it was much harder for some of us. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it was a regime I don't know, but uh, <laughs> now uh, to be honest, I mean I think there's a bit of the financial institutions have got money, but they don't have. You know, they don't have the actual clients to give that money to. Uh, for example, I'll tell you, I, I know of two, two businesses that um, do financing and they're sitting on good money, but people don't want to go and, and borrow this money. Whether, uh, whether it's interest rates, whether <laughs> there are no jobs to, get, to, 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 to go and get that money, I'm not sure. But for, 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 for our part, um, we do have our own money that we use. To, and, and, and besides, Glencore mostly pays us upfront for some of these That helps in capital. terms of our working capital, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, um, you know, Maven, it's been very, very interesting having this conversation with you, um, you know, for a second time. And, you know, we would love to have you again come on the show. But, you know, just as a final thought, uh, what is the outlook like for your group of companies for the rest of the year? I know we're now in Q3. What is the outlook? How how does the Mudenda Empire, if I can call it that, end <laughs> we've, we, we look. We've got a. We've got a. Uh, I, I'm sure in the last uh, interview we had, I mentioned Bitumen World, which is a, a business out of South Africa, out of Zimbabwe, mainly. It's a multi-billion-dollar um, um, construction company, and um, I'm privileged to be uh, the Zambian shareholder and director, and um, we. Q3 to Q4, we are setting up Bitumen World. We, we are starting with a commercial beach, uh, beach plant, which is concrete beach plant, which we're setting up is uh, worth a, a million or two dollars. Um, we'll set up that w within this quarter, en entering into fourth quarter, and um, that will be our last project for, for 2024. Um, uh, 2023, sorry, 2024, we, I won't say much, but 2024, we're going into manufacturing. Yeah, and I didn't want you to say too much because <laughs> uh, no, you want to have I will you back not, on the show to tell yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I will not say about the manufacturing, <laughs> but 2024, yeah. we're starting to manufacture we, we're, uh, under a, a new brand. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was Maven Mandenda sitting down with me, Mwelwa, Financial Insight founder, to discuss everything that's been going on with Mudenda Capital and the various group of companies that Mr. Maven uh, sits on as board chair. Tune in uh, for another riveting episode next week of the Financial Insight Show. I have been your host, and we look forward to you tuning in again on all our channels from Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. <music> Hi, welcome to East Park Lifestyle Studios. Come in. Oh, yeah.